Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day and thank you again for clicking on the video. Today we have a, another CPL profile flight. So actually, as of the time of record, um, recording this, I have not passed my commercial pilot's license. I have a few flights left to go. However, as of the time of editing this, as of now, I have passed it. I passed it first time. Um, not nothing went too wrong um, as planned pretty much so everything went good and we will have another video in the future basically debriefing my flight and I'll be giving you guys some tips and tricks of how I think it went so yeah as we can see we have a normal departure out of runway 19 on Oxford and as you can he see here we're going straight ahead through Bry's control zone um, as if you have not seen my last video make sure you go check that out and click that little eye in the top corner if you can see that there uh, you can go check out my last video which was again another CPL profile. For those of you who haven't seen that video, so for the commercial pilot's license flight we generally start off with a navigation. So here we are going straight through the bride's control zone and we are flying to, I believe it was a small town just south of the uh, bride's control zone. Um, which we are trying to identify just north of Membry if any of you are familiar with the area. Um, and once overhead there, we will be starting our diversion part of the flight. So in our commercial pilot's license flight, we do one navigation leg, which is pre-planned before the flight, and then we'll do one diversion. So once we get overhead our point, which you can see is just coming up now, we'll start a turn towards our diversion point. Just here, I'm planning the diversion leg while flying. It can be quite challenging to fly the plane while, div um, while planning the diversion. It is quite a skill, and it takes a bit of practice, definitely. But obviously we've done loads of navigation flights on all my landaways and stuff, so we've had good practice doing it. Once overhead that little town, we can just see on the right hand side of the screen, we'll start our turn and we'll head towards a diversion point. Now annoyingly this diversion point meant we had to go back through Bryce's controlled airspace, which means as I begin my turn I must request my clearance to get through. So I start my turn and then contact Bryce, which I'm already speaking to luckily. Um, and I just have to ask them if I can transit their controlled airspace. Now, my diversion point was actually a tiny roundabout. It is a visual reporting point for Bryce, I believe. Um, however, it's a tiny roundabout, and from the air, it can actually be quite hard to spot. Luckily, as we get closer, I do spot it. Uh, we can use some other features, such as the roads that are there, to help identify it. Um, you can use the large roads that are like and the direction that they're going. Um, as well as that, obviously we were there pretty much on time, if, if you, your calculations are correct, the wind you predicted is roughly okay. You know your ground speed, so you know roughly what time you're going to be there. Um, so I knew it was roughly where it was, and just using the roads around it helped me to identify it. Although I was slightly off course, uh, I think the crosswind um, in the air was actually slightly higher than predicted. So now, generally... After my navigation part of the flight, we will go and do some circuits at a different airfield. So, um, Gloucester's nearby, so the aim actually on the day was to try and go to Gloucester. However, unfortunately, they were just too busy and couldn't accommodate us. Um, so, we decided just to put circuits back at Oxford. So, on my actual test, my actual exam, we did my circuits at Cranfield. Um, I only found that out the night before. But, um, so we had the circuits at Cranfield, and we would generally do that after the navigation, which we did as well on the actual exam. However, as they were booked back at Oxford, as it was the only place we were able to get circuits at, we, had to, we did the GH first, and then the navigation leg. So as we can see here, just orbiting over that roundabout once we spotted it, and now it is time for some GH. So GH, general handling, for those who don't know, you've got a variety of things. So firstly, up here, some steep turns. 45 degrees angle of bank and using the horizon and the nose of the aircraft we can uh, maintain our altitude whilst in a very steep turn as the name says 45 degrees uh, about three we do a 360 degree turn roughly and then we will level it out and then after that one to the right as well so then after these steep turns you'll see we will do some stalling so now there's three types of stalls that we have to do um, I made a video of it in the single engine a while back um, stalls and sleep turns while I was practicing some general handling in the single but essentially we, we cut the power here let that speed really come down and wait for a really heavy buffet we, we want to see for this first stall 
you want to see a real, a big stall pretty much. The stall one is screaming at us. Um, a huge nose drop as we can see there. Then we let the nose drop, apply that power, a lot of right rudder, and then we start climbing out. Um, at the best rate of climb. So this is basically us practicing what would happen if it, we were ever to get into a big stall like that. Next up, we have the base turn stall. This is... Um, so for those of you who know what the base leg is it is essentially the leg of before you land when you're about 90 degrees to the runway uh, before you turn onto your final approach so this is simulating us with the gear down and our float in a uh, our flaps oh, sorry in approach mode um we will do a stall as if we were turning onto that base leg um and as if we were turning there you go, we, we get the stall, as soon as the first sign of that stall warner, what we do is we put the nose down, power up, we get the wings level of course, and then climb out, and when we get that positive rate of climb, we can bring the flaps and the gear up. And then finally, for the, uh, the final stall is a uh, one on final, a final approach stall. We have landing flapping, we have the gear down, and again, at the first sign of the stall, as soon as that stall warner makes a tiniest little peep we instantly apply full power with that right rudder to counteract the yaw and then with the final approach stall what we have to do is we can see we bring the flaps to approach straight away and as we climb out once we have a positive rate of climb we can bring the gear and the flap both up as well next up it was time to head back to Oxford once the GH is all done. Now in the exam I had more GH but we just didn't have time on the day. We will do things like some instrument flying, uh, engine failures, engine fires and all that good stuff. As the exam is a tiny bit longer than this flight was we didn't have enough time and I am pretty comfortable with my GH. Um, we'd rather focus on the circuits and uh, um, back at Oxford and make sure we can get all of those done. Um, as yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with GH, especially engine restarts, it's nothing too complicated. But first off, here we are, we've rejoined back into Oxford and we are on final for a full flap landing to start off. So, as can't remember how the landing went, let's check it out. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, not too awful. Um, but then yeah, flaps can come all the way up and we go around applying full power and then we get to our rotation speed. Uh, slight pitch back and back up into the air for another circuit. And then next up we will do a uh, flapless approach. Um, and this is the exact same as in my exam. We will have to do one go around with, um, with the flaps as, as if we were doing a normal landing. We'll do a go around as soon as the examiner says. We will also do a, um, a normal one where the flaps full and one flapless landing. So as we can see here, on final again with full flaps. Not sure why we did full flaps twice. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I guess it's just more practice. We had some time, uh, so why not practice the circuit? I if I remember correctly, I believe I accidentally just put the flaps in on uh, on the downwind leg, and we went, oh well, we might as well just make this a a. Uh, a flaps one instead of a flapless is not too much different. The only difference with the flapless is you are slightly quicker, but apart from that, it, the, the technique is almost the exact same. So I then decided to skip the next circuit as it was the exact same, and we just did a go around in the end. So full power, and as soon as my instructor says go around, we bring that landing to the landing flap up one notch, and then when we get that positive rate of climb, the gear and the flap up. And then on the go around, my instructor gives me the engine failure. I believe this was a left engine failure. So um, f initially, we control the aircraft. We go right power up, make sure the gear and the flap is up. And then once again, once we're still controlling the aircraft, bring that left. Make sure that left power is all the way back, and then we can close the engine master off. Um, now, obviously, this was just a touch drill. We weren't actually shutting down the engine master. However, in the exam, we do actually turn the engine master off. Not on the circuits, but we will do one in flight and then restart the engine, which is a really cool thing. And then we do an asymmetric circuit to land that is on one engine. But, of course, as we're on final, my instructor says go around. Now, unlike the normal go around, for the asymmetric go around when you only have one engine, as soon as they say go around, you put that power up and you don't wait for the positive rate of climb. You just put the gear and the flap straight up. Being made to orbit here, 
brilliant. Thanks again, ATC. Always fun with one engine. But, obviously, in the real scenario, you'd have made a pan-pan call, so they would try and get you on the ground as soon as possible. They wouldn't be making you orbit. But here we are, asymmetric, back to land into Oxford. Um, not bad for an asymmetric landing, if I remember. If I remember... Um, yeah, pretty comfortable with my landings in the Twin. I really enjoy flying it and landing it. Um, it's a brilliant aircraft to fly. So, yeah. Um, so, guys, that was my CPL profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a like if you do enjoy this kind of content. I really enjoy making it, so I hope you guys do. We have one more um, CPL profile video for you guys slightly different again we got I believe we had circuits at Gloucester that time so stay tuned for that one in two weeks time and then I'll be sitting down in front of the camera and generally talking about my CPL how it went tips and tricks for you guys I really hope you guys um, will enjoy that content coming in a, f a few weeks so make sure you stick around for that but I'll leave future Ollie for the outro as normal thanks for watching guys and uh, I will see you in the next video once again, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I do love making these videos, these CPL profile flights, and I hope you they, they help you guys. So if you ever have your CPL or you just enjoy flying and watch, enjoy watching the videos, I really hope you guys enjoy. But if you did enjoy, please remember to subscribe. We're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If we can get that, it will be absolutely amazing. That was my That was my target when I started the channel. So if we can get there... It would just be amazing, guys. But if you did enjoy today's video and you didn't see last week's video, which, again, was another one similar to this. So if you enjoyed, make sure you check the video up there. Give it a click. You guys will like it, similar to this one. And if you want to see what a day in the life of a pilot is like, go check out this video. Again, another amazing video. Hope you guys enjoy.